Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and getting a chance now to share a card with you guys using the My Favorite Things Fancy Flowers stamp set and coordinating dies that I'm actually, as of filming this, doing a giveaway on. I will have a link to that video at the end of this video. So I'm planning on posting these pretty much back to back because the giveaway is a short window only. But anyway, I trimmed down some Canson XL watercolor paper and then I put it in my Misty. This is the original sized Misty. And I've shown this in other videos. I've also done just a separate quick tip video on this. But I generally like to keep my MFT dynamic sets together. I just find it more convenient that way. And when I want to stamp all the images, it's so easy to just line up. I put the dies face down on the paper I want to stamp on. And then I'm just lining up all the stamps on top of the coordinating dies, which with this set, it was really easy this time. Sometimes you have to fiddle with it a bit. I know some of you will have trouble with it. You do whatever works for you. If cutting apart your dies works easier and it's easier for you to use, that's fine. Sometimes I still cut them apart. It just kind of depends on what I'm going for and what I'm creating and all that sort of thing. But for a set like this, it's just easier for me to keep it all together. So once I had all the stamps lined up, I shut the lid to my Misty and then picked all the stamps up at once. And then I treated the watercolor paper with my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm inking up all of these stamps with my Versamark ink. So the anti-static powder tool keeps the embossing powder from clinging to anything but the stamped image. And then the Versamark ink is a slow drying clear watermark ink. So it gives it um, because it takes longer to dry, the embossing powder sticks to it. So now I'm sprinkling my detail white embossing powder over it. And I just do that over a coffee filter. That way I can use the filter to funnel all the embossing powder back into the container. And once I'm done with all of that, I'm going to let my heat tool heat up for a little bit. And I'm going to bring it to the cardstock and melt all of this embossing powder. And when I'm stamping, when I'm doing white on white like this, when I think I'm done embossing, I always tilt the paper back and forth to make sure that all the areas are glossy, that there's no grainy spots. Otherwise, I just need to quickly melt those with my heat tool. And then once everything is ready, I can now watercolor these images. And I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers again. I'm kind of obsessed with these lately. I just, the more I play with them, the more I love them. And for me, the more I've experimented with them, and now that I've got the cardstock combination that I like, and the brush combination that I like, I like to use this little H2O water brush. I like the Canson XL watercolor paper. Now that I have a combo that works for me, I just, I reach for these so often, obviously, because most of my videos lately have been using these. So I super sped up the coloring again. This is sped up about 10 times faster than it actually took me. Some of these images are fairly detailed, so I had to move a little slower than I normally would just to make sure I'm not like going all over with the colors. But I kept my color palette fairly simple. I actually followed the colors that came, um, that this stamp set came with in the kit, which is what I am doing the giveaway on. The kit is no longer available. It's sold out literally like a day or two ago. But all of these items are available individually, so I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. But the colors of the kit really inspired um, the colors I wanted to use to create my card. So that's what I ended up using and I will have a picture of all the colors on my blog. I used lilac, violet, pink, light carmine, pink flamingo, mustard, light green, and emerald green to do all of my coloring. And I would just go on um, pretty much using all the same color like at once per image and then go in with a different color, usually working kind of all over the place really because these flowers you can kind of do whatever you want. Just the style they are. So you can choose pretty much whatever colors you fancy to make these. So I went with the pinks and the kind of peachy pink and the purples for these. And then once everything was watercolor and dried, I can line these dyes back up again and I'm just going to tape them into place with some micropore tape just to keep this from shifting when I run it through my machine because there is nothing worse than it, you know, not paying attention and as it goes through it shifts dramatically and you end up cutting like half the images off and just messing up all that work. <laughs> so I ran it through my machine so I got everything die cut at once. This is the biggest reason why I love having all the dies still connected is it just makes everything so much more convenient. So I did all that and then I have a large scrap of the same watercolor paper and I just ran that through using the words for friends dynamics and I die cut the word friend. 
and I left it in the scrap of paper here so I could quickly just use another one of the clean color markers and watercolor basically kind of an ombre look on these letters so just scribbling the color on the bottom and then pulling it up with a water brush and then I also grabbed the single stitch line rounded rectangle frames dynamics and I die cut some gravel gray cardstock from MFT with that and rather than stacking the frame, which is what I would normally do, like I cut it three, maybe four times, I decided to use foam tape. No idea if that was really a more faster method or not. I just decided to use foam tape this time anyway. And I cut my foam tape into thirds so that it was thin enough to go around. These frames would work really good for shaker cards too. As I was doing this, I was like, ooh, this could be a really fun shaker card. But... I was I had other things on my mind when I was making this so it's like no I'll save the shakers for later so I just adhered my frame to the card base which is just heavyweight white cardstock cut to um five and a half by eight and a half and then scored it four and a quarter four and a quarter so it's a top folding a2 size card and I kind of figured out how I was going to do the layout of my images and then I'm going to adhere all these letters to spell out the word friend so I just started with the D and then worked my way back to make sure I have enough space for everything. And I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi to adhere these rather than, and same thing, rather than stack the letters, I decided to adhere them flat to the card base. And I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi because they're wide enough that I can just apply a really thin amount of adhesive and they'll adhere really well. And I used my reverse tweezers to help with that just to get everything lined up because sometimes my fingers get in the way and you can't really see where everything's going. So got those all adhered and then I'm going to work on adhering the flowers and the stems and the leaves. So the stems I just adhered directly to the frame with a bit of more of the Tombow Mono Multi. And then the flowers themselves I'm just popping up. I had extra pieces of this foam tape left over from trimming it down into thirds which just worked perfectly for this. So I'm able to use all those small strips to adhere all the leaves and go around the flowers so that's not getting away in the frame. So it just worked out really well today. <laughs> So I'm gonna get everything adhered. I still kind of played around with the placement and the layout of everything. And then once I was like getting happy with it, that's when I'd start applying the foam tape and getting everything adhered into place. I wanted to make sure none, none of the elements were popping off to the side of the card, which is fine if you're hand delivering it. I like the look of that, but if you're planning on mailing it, you either have to, you're gonna have to get a bigger envelope or worse comes worse, kind of fold over certain elements, which end up kind of ruining the look of it. So. I decided to keep everything contained within, you know, the frame of the outside of the card. And then once I had all that adhered, I'd saved the, the this last large flower and the leaves for the inside of the card and decided to keep it at that and not stamp any sentiments or anything. Just have this gorgeous flower and the leaves on the inside of the card and then plenty of space to write something in the recipient. And that finished it off. So like I said, there'll be links below the video to my blog post with links to all the supplies used, um, pictures, all that sort of info is in the description box below the video. So check that out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting on my videos. I really, really appreciate you guys. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.